Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. One of my favorite projects that's on the easier side is a volcano saltern. Here's one that I did for uh, in preparation for a demo this past week with a, another wood turning group. It can be as simple like this one or complex like these. This one was actually kind of fun. It was a perfect sphere with as a salt shaker. And this one is one I made many years ago and another pair of salt shakers, pepper and salt. But inevitably in a demonstration or when someone sees this, once one problem is they don't recognize it as a salt shaker. Once you tell them that it is a salt shaker, there are two questions that come up. Number one, how do you get salt into the salt shaker? Because there's no lid. And number two, how do you get salt out of the salt shaker? Because there's no hole in the top. You're supposed to turn it over, right? Well, let's examine that just a little bit. Here's a cutaway. You have an outer shell or a cavity in the upper part of the salt shaker and then you have a funnel here in the bottom. You actually turn the, make the funnel separately so that you turn the outside and then you turn this bottom part and then you have a hole through the bottom, 564 or bigger, and then you glue this funnel into this base. So when you pour salt in, it goes in through the top, accumulates here, as long as gravity pulls it down and you don't shake it, then when you want salt, you shake it, it comes up and falls down through this hole here. So let's demonstrate for the reality. Let's take some salt, pour some in the top, just a little, little bit so that the fall, salt falls in. It's not falling out. You can hand it to your uh, dinner mate. Here you go. And But then when you want it, shake it. There's your salt. It's a fun thing to do. And nobody up front recognizes this as a salt shaker until you tell them. Then they ask the two questions and you can explain how. But they can be a variety of styles like these or or anything that you want. So, let's turn this saltern, or volcano saltern. I believe this wood is dry sycamore. I love the small grain pattern of sycamore. After roughing it round, it is time to cut dovetail tenons on both ends. In my experience, it is a rare spindle project that does not require a tenon. My skew does a good job of cutting the perfect shape for the tenon. Now to mount to the chuck, but take a moment to check for the ends to for the fit of the tenon. They are close, worth, to, worth it to check it now. I see some checks at the tailstock end that I will need to avoid. Then, part it off. This is the longer end that will be the body of the saltern. First, trim the end to remove the nub. Then, try to trace a possible shape. It is tough to draw a 2D image on a round cylinder. Next, drill out the hollow with a couple of Forstner bits. I like to drill first with a smaller diameter bit to remove some of the interior wood where the velocity is very slow despite the RPM. Then drill again with the larger bits that usually have a tougher time to cut through the wood. The third drill is very shallow to create a small mortise that will need to accept a tenon later. Then mark the hollow depth on the outside. The shorter piece will become the interior volcano funnel. My spindle gadge does a quick job of shaping the slope of the volcano. This is the area that will hold the salt reserve. A more critical part is next, the hole for the salt to come through. I have learned from my machinist friends to never, ever drill a small diameter hole with a long skinny drill. I am not sure of the technical name for these short stubby bits. These starter bits are double-ended and will not bend even a tiny bit. Mine came from a big box store in a set of four. After a shallow start, I switch to the 5 64th inch drill and drill halfway through. There seems to be a debate over which end to drill from due to the risk of the drill wandering out the side. By using a starter bit and drilling halfway, I think I have resolved the debate, at least for myself.
Now for the tough part, to fit a tenon at the base of the volcano. I start shallow in case I have to move further down the wood. This is nearly always a cut, test, cut, test process until it fits. Often I overcut and have to go further down the wood and potentially recut the volcano. This one, not too bad. Now I reverse the volcano into the chuck using the bottom of the volcano as a tenon. Then move on to remove the excess wood and cut a volcano shape on the bottom. Then, again, using the starter bit and a regular bit just like I did on the top side. And sand, but not apply finish. I want raw wood here. I pulled from my shelf a tenon mounted to a faceplate. I need now to trim it back to become a jam chuck. With the piece now mounted on the jam chuck in the live center, I can shape the shaker. In my mind is an alien spaceship. This should fake out anyone from seeing a salt shaker in this salt urn. After sanding, I mark two pairs of grooves with my skew. Then using a wire burner, burn lines for a little more character than the sycamore grain. There is a little more method to my madness. At least one of these grooves will serve to remount my wood for final work on the bottom. This work is mostly to glue in the funnel piece. After glue dries, I can trim back the excess wood at the funnel and resand the bottom. For a food safe finish, I'm using a utility mix of beeswax and mineral oil. One pint mineral oil to one pound beeswax. I like my spaceship, Saltern. I do not think anyone would, at least at first, recognize it as a salt shaker. It is a simple shape with nothing to advertise and nothing overly ornate. Still, it is functional as a salt provider. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week, I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. It could save your life.